सीनियर जर्नलिस्ट ऑथर एंड एक्स पी एम ओ द मैन इन चार्ज ऑफ द प्रेस एडवाइजर टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर द फॉर्म ऑफ प्रेस एडवाइजर टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर संजय बारू इज ऑन न्यूज आर टू नाइट संजय बारू गुड इवनिंग वॉट अ फ्लट आर यू कॉज डेवन टू आई मीन यूर बुक सीम्स टू हैव पीव नथिंग बट दोज इन योर ऑफिस आई डोंट नो इफ यू हर्ड अट दे अबाउट यू हैव यू हर्ड अट दे अबाउट यू इन रिस्पॉन्स no well i briefly i mean someone called me and read out something that was issued okay let me read it out for you not, not that it will be a pleasure for you to hear it all over again but it says pankaj pachori the prime minister's office current media adviser dismissed baru's book as quote an attempt to misuse a privileged position and access to high office to gain credibility and apparently exploited for commercial gains the book that he came back to power in 2009 repeating what jawarlal nehru did in 1957 it's a success of upa1 that made upa2 possible so i don't want to uh, you know anyone to have the impression that because the statement from the pmo i think has given the impression that there's a diatribe fiction
I don't want to really uh, elaborate. No, I know you don't want to, but it's important it's nevertheless. It's not correct in my view for a Prime Minister of India to allow his authority to be undermined by knowingly letting important issues before they are vetted by him to be vetted by somebody outside the government process. In this case, Sonia Gandhi. It's wrong. It's not the way is your, the government is yeah, supposed is to be run. Well, well, as you know, uh, that is precisely why I felt when uh, Rahul Gandhi called his ordinance uh, the decision nonsense, I said he should have quit. I mean, my views are well known. I don't hide my views. Whatever I feel I've said uh, on record in public, and this book is all on record, so I don't want to say anything. No, I must, in fact, compliment you because you've written a very candid account. In fact, I find another part very important where you write about how he formed empowered group of ministers and how, in a way, that undermined his own authority. Because when you form an empowered group of ministers, that means you will not sit over a cabinet meeting. The EGOM can meet, take decisions. He say that and in your view was he close to resigning I'm not saying res he may not have penned down his resignation was he close to resigning at the height of that crisis well first of all uh, I said that particular quote I said that uh, he said in my judgment and from what I know because he said this both to mr. K Subramaniam uh, who's no more yes but he also said this to my father who's still alive and I know from them that he said it more in sadness than anger. I think he was certainly saddened by the fact that uh, he was asked to uh, st uh, step back on the nuclear deal. But as, I, as the book recounts in great detail, uh, he was extremely clever in the way he reopened the nuclear deal, checkmated the left, got the majority in parliament, and you know, got the nuclear deal done. And I actually believe that was an important initiative of this prime minister. So at that particular point in time, he did feel let down. But subsequently, as I've written in my book, Mrs. Gandhi supported him. And did I don't think he could have actually finally done the nuclear deal without that support. So Absolutely. in that sense, no, that's uh, you know, her support is important. And I, I must also add, Arunab, that in UPA 1, you know, I mean, I don't want to, the viewer to think, because you should read the book, I've recorded repeatedly that there, have, there was a very good relationship between the two. Uh, I think a lot of the problems which I've seen in UPA 2 were not there in UPA 1. And I, I've also speculated on what the reason could be, but I leave it at that. Uh, I go back to that one, the big controversy, that Pulak Chatterjee was getting Sonia Gandhi to vet and therefore get instructions on important files to be cleared by the Prime Minister. Was the Prime Minister aware of this? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, we were aware. I was aware of some of those uh, instances. So I'm sure, of course. I don't think there was a, it was being done surreptitiously. So the Prime Minister knew that Sonia Gandhi was giving instructions on important issues and files before they were signed off or rejected by him. 
Well, I can't say with authority that he knew because I never actually asked him, are you aware of this? But I certainly think he would have. I mean, he was intelligent enough to know what was happening. I would certainly think so. That means the Prime Minister was transgressing the very basis of the manner in which the government headed by him should be running. That's a very important thing if the Prime Minister knew. That means the Prime Minister of India broke the rules regarding the, form, the running of his own government. Well, uh, Arunab, let me say one thing. I think it's true in many coalition governments that the kind of you know, uh, textbook prime minister of the past where the prime minister took every decision uh, on his own or within the cabinet was no longer the case. I mean, even with VP Singh or with uh, Gauda, with IK Gujral, even with Mr. Vajpayee. There were many decisions. Um, you know, I've not put some of that in this book because this book is about Manmohan Singh. But as a journalist, I know during Mr. Vajpayee's time, uh, how Bal Thakare or LK Adwani or somebody else uh, would be in a position to push, put pressure on Mr. Vajpayee to take one decision or the other. So it's not the first time that we have seen. I mean, there's been a weakening of the office of the Prime Minister in, in coalition governments. I've said that in the book. Uh, so in that sense, I don't think Manmohan Singh was the first person uh, to have been forced to consult someone else outside of government. I, um, you know, and I, 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 fact, I, I, I know, I, no, I, I know. But can I say one thing to you, Dr. Baru? You have been a yeah. stalwart and a senior in this profession. And I, I sense, if I may hazard saying so, that you have held back as much, if not more than what you have revealed must have been difficult for you to hold back a lot. Am I right? A lot of things you've held back. Yes, sir. And I've perhaps you're book. even holding that back now. Well, and I respect that. I certainly held back what was told to me in confidence. You know, I think this PMO statement says something about my sharing confidences. Yeah, wherever it's, I was it says told you're exploiting is, it for money. Uh, you know, wherever I was told, no, 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 that's nonsense. But wherever I was told that this is not only for your ears and you should not share it, I have not. Uh, so I have held back quite a lot. Do you think, and I don't intend writing about do that. You think, do you think the Prime Minister will talk to you after this? Well, I certainly hope so. He's a graceful man. He's spoken to a lot of people that have been critical of him. I mean, the left, for example, uh, destabilized his government. He still meets, I think, Prakash Karat and Sitaram <laughs> So I don't see why he can't meet me. <laughs> okay. Well, Sanjay Baru, congratulations on your book. It's creating ripples. And thank you for talking to thank me you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.